Shardur Thakur is a good bowler. He can clock more than 130, almost 140. He has a solid slower ball and a sharp bouncer. Yet you would be delusional if you say he's better than Jaspreet Bumrah or Mohamed Shami. However, for a solid period of three-ish years, he used to take a lot of wickets and at many occasions even more than Shami or Bumrah himself. So how is it possible that a bowler who is not as good as another is getting more wickets consistently? And this is something I've coined the Shardul Thakur syndrome. To understand how something like this is possible and to use it for your own benefit, you got to figure out the why. That's very simple actually. When you look at an innings, there's the power play, the middle overs and the depth. Well, in the power play, the ball is usually new and the batsmen are also new. So you want your best bowlers to bowl them so they can use the new ball and get their best batsmen out. Because teams also send their best batsmen at the top. And the one problem of bowling in the power play is that the fielders are up. So you want to trust that your best bowlers are capable of mitigating that weakness. However, when you come to the middle overs, the equation changes. By then the ball is old, it's not doing anything. And the batsmen are usually set. And what happens then is, uh, the batsman starts thinking, okay, this is now my time to score. However, there is a, one very important uh, strength that the middle overs have for the bowling team, and that is that four fielders outside. So you have to approach it from a batsman's point of view. As a batsman, you look at a team and you think, okay, they have three good bowlers and two average bowlers. I'm gonna play them out in the power play. If I get a bad ball, I'll end it using the fielding restrictions. And then the second the middle overs come, I'm gonna take their weaker bowlers and hit them out of the park. While the reasoning behind this logic is fairly solid, there's a way you can make use of it. So if this is like, let's say this is international cricket, you have the best bowlers, the average bowlers, and then some of these, right? You can apply this model to any level of cricket. If you have the best bowlers, they can handle any batsman in this range, and they have a solid chance of getting them out. And anything under that, they can hit them. Or they'll just get them out straight up. They won't even be able to play them. And vice versa, the best batsmen, whoever they are, They'll have a range like this, where they can play these bowlers fairly well. Anything under this point, they just simply won't get out. Like for example, if I was to bat against a team of 12 year olds, I'm pretty sure I could hit like 25 runs every over and I would never get out, right? So what batsmen will do is, the best bowlers bowl in the power play, right? They'll play them out, they'll hit a bad ball or two. And what this means is, even though they are the best, if you have the best against the best, they're still at an equal level. And what happens then is they don't get wickets, but they'll stop the runs. And this creates pressure on the batsman's mind. So that when you get to the middle overs, if you get a bowler who is average, he, he might not be the best, but he's not that bad. He's just good enough to where he's still inside this range of where a batsman can make a mistake. That's where he takes the wickets because the batsman will try something extra where he shouldn't. And in doing this, along with the four fielders outside, he'll probably get caught or he'll try and play an expansive shot and get bowled. And this is where the strength of Shardul Thakur syndrome lies. You can take an average bowler, if you use him at the right time, he will be more effective than your best bowlers can ever be. So as a captain, the way you can use this theory is, most teams, especially as you go lower in level, they'll have one or two very good bowlers and probably a good spinner. And then they'll have two or three average bowlers. So the way you want to use this is you want to get your best bowlers, have them bowl in the power play. And then the second the field goes back, you want to take your average bowler, the one who is good, but perhaps not the best. And you want to send him out because the best batsman on the other team will be thinking, this is now our time to shine. And in doing so, they will try something extra and get out. And if you lose wickets in the middle overs, that's where you lose the In conclusion, use Shardul Thakur syndrome to your advantage and use it to both make your team and then send your bowlers to bowl in a situation where they are most likely to succeed.